Hi, Vanessa. Thank you very much for appearing on the show. You wrote a beautiful song dedicated to the people suffering here in Victoria. It's raised a lot of people's spirits in this battle. Was it a spur of the moment idea or had you been working on that for a considerable amount of time? Video was a, a spur of the moment uh, thing, but the song uh, I'd written two weeks earlier and it was after I'd come home uh, and I'd had to, I'd watched a, a funeral uh, for a, a girl, a, a young and healthy girl um, that committed suicide. Um, and that was the sixth suicide that, that I'd known of in, in my circle of friends. Um, you know, it, uh, just unthinkable. And uh, so that song was inspired by that. And I guess the yeah. silence that's killing us really. Um, and um, the video was just, I just wanted to share it and I didn't know if anyone would see it. Um, and the support has just been so beautiful. Yeah. That is wonderful. And it's helped so many people can have many different options to help people and writing music is definitely one of them. It gets to people's heart and soul and it sends a clear message to those that haven't lifted a finger and they haven't helped campaign for freedom that now's the time for action and their silence is deafening and that's contributing to the problem, isn't it? Absolutely. It is just as bad as, as it, it's probably worse sitting there silent you know um it is it is shameful really um and there is really nothing left to lose by standing up absolutely and some of the behavior that's been displayed people are emotionally distraught a man drove his car into the ocean in broad daylight trying to end his own life. The number of Victorians self-harming and committing suicide is off the charts. So it's, this is what's a devastating scenario that's playing out with many people. Their mental and emotional well-being is taking a serious toll. And you've noticed this yourself as well, have you? Definitely, you know, and I know I'm not the only one, you know, um, and I guess I wish that I had a platform, you know, and I don't. I wish I did because I would be speaking and I'd be trying to bring awareness to what's happening because it is real. Mental health is suffering. Families are destroyed. Businesses will never come back. You know, livelihoods gone, the older forgotten, the sicker forgotten, you know, our most vulnerable, the people that we were meant to be protecting, we've literally forgotten about. It's disgusting. Yes, it yeah. certainly is. Well said. And the Melbourneians draconian stage four lockdown will likely be extended. These people are relentless. Premier Andrews announcing that it is unlikely that he will allow metropolitan Victoria to go to the next stage of restriction easing. Now, this is going to have a devastating toll on people, as it already is. The extension of this lockdown will condemn many families to bankruptcy. People will be denied the right to attend funerals and weddings. And this is pushing people over the edge. This is really devastating, isn't it? You know what's so sad is that I think people like you and I and, and, a, and a minority of people knew that this was going to happen in our heart of hearts um, and it's still so gut-wrenching to hear that and I just go, if we for one second pretended that, let's just pretend there is a pandemic, okay? Let's pretend for, for this argument's sake. Wasn't it about cases? Was it not about cases? So aren't cases down? So what the fuck, excuse my French, but what, I mean, if that's not enough for people to, uh, for, for deniers, I guess, to start saying, well, hang on, there's obviously something else going on. I don't really know what, what's going to work, to be honest, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. And it's uh, so upsetting and... For a virus where 99% of the people survive and recover, these restrictions are completely unjustified. And it really makes people think, how can this continue? But surely people must wake up to this pandemic and the scam 
that is being rolled out before people's very own eyes. It has nothing to do with a virus. It's all about control and compliance. That's why they don't care about the effectiveness of the masks. They just want to silence people under this new world order takeover. Many agendas at play and it seems people still haven't woken up to this fact. That's why we need more artists such as yourself speaking out, writing songs. People that host talk shows can get the message out. There was someone flying a plane that was calling for the dismissal of Dan Andrews. We need everybody taking action for freedom, don't we? Absolutely. Everybody should, you know. And you know what I think has really been damaging is it, it was a really sneaky and very smart narrative um, where, you know, it, it's almost you are now vilified uh, and you're called selfish yeah. for wanting to fight for your freedoms and human rights. Wanting to fight for human rights and mental health, it's selfish, you know. Like what a horrible and manipulative uh, way to, I guess, suppress people that want to fight for freedom. It's pretty disgusting. Yeah, it's really sad. That's a good point you raised. They want people to be selfish and feeling guilty for their own freedom. And businesses are caught in a catch-22 because they want to keep operating so they can pay their overheads, put food on the table, but they have to comply with these Orwellian rules, which are then pushed on to the consumers. So they're stuck right in the middle of the tyranny, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's... um. You can't win. You cannot win. You cannot win. There is no middle ground. It's either a yes or a no. So we either stand up together and we say no. And that's what's baffling because we really do have the power. You know, when people say we're the 99%, we really are. So I, I just, I don't know what it's going to take. I really don't. And, and that's scary. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. And the way it should be structured, if somebody is worried about catching a flu, then it should be up to them to take their own measures necessary to prevent that. It shouldn't be to the point where it's having catastrophic consequences on people's livelihood and well-being. So it seems like it wasn't structured in the best interests of the public. It was a complete takeover under this UN and it's all disguised as this. I don't know anybody that's contracted this COVID. So, you know, that's very suspicious in itself when we're over seven months in and still nobody knows anybody that's suffered from this. So yeah. how can this be necessary to roll all this out and affect so many lives? And then there was a... Yeah, exactly. There was a homeless man living in a vehicle. He was fined $1,650 for being outside the five kilometre radius that was designated so they're targeting the most vulnerable people. They're being punished on top of their own struggles that are already overwhelming. So that's what they want to do as well, drive people into depression, anxiety, and break them down that way. Oh, and it is, and it's doing that. And, and we're seeing that, you know, like people, um, I did a, a video the other day about rational suicide. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but that's really where we're at. You know, I've got friends that have never been suicidal at all, having suicidal thoughts, but weighing it up in a rational way. Like maybe it's better, it's probably the only way out. That's the reality of what's happening. And you know, like it, I, what's sad I think about the human race is, and not everybody, I don't want to generalize, but you know, I think it, it's quite sad that people, a lot of people will only really stand up once it directly affects them once it's their daughter or their son that's killed themselves or their business that's gone under, you know, that's when they might go, oh, actually, I want to fight for my rights, you know, and that's really sad. We can't wait for that point. We really need to start looking out for each other and fighting for each other, you know, otherwise it's going to be too late. Absolutely. Yeah. Well said. And many people are worried about this COVID shot that's come into place. They said the drug maker Glaxo will kill half a million sharks just to create the, get one of the ingredients for this. Unimaginable harm, and it will be as mandatory as possible, injected into people, and a lot are so busy, they're not gonna do the research, read the vaccine manufacturer's inserts, and the drug makers are not liable 
for any adverse reactions. So they've really isn't covered that, themselves, haven't they? It's all criminal, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, isn't that, a lo isn't that enough? Isn't the, the fact that they're not liable, doesn't that tell you that there's something wrong? Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I I'm not sure. I think people have been beaten down for so long that now they just want to go back to real life whatever it takes yep vaccine whatever not tested you know uh give it to me i don't care i just want to go back to life um i think that was probably the plan um you know and it's it's working to a degree and it's really scary but um on another quick note if i can you know it is interesting how many people are you know i'm sure i've been called a conspiracy theorist and i don't know why because all this stuff i talk about it's happening um but my dentist is a very well educated man and um he's dental assistant as well they're, they're both incredibly um educated and they said her uh father died of dementia so she told me this story a week ago he died 100 percent of dementia after the death uh, the, the family were contacted and they said would you mind if we put COVID on the death certificate? We're happy to cover the costs of the funeral. So I'd heard about this, but I never to anybody that I knew. And now somebody that I know has actually told me it's happened to them. Luckily, the family in this case refused. But we've got to start thinking like, I mean, we know these numbers are, are bullshit. Like, what's going on? Yeah. See, that's a very powerful testimony right there. And it was even admitted by Brett Sutton that death certificates are being falsely labelled COVID deaths. So it's bribery. So it, it's happening on so many levels, the corruption that we're seeing because of this. Whenever yeah. there's a cash incentive to manipulate death certificates, that right there is a red flag, isn't it? And that would not be necessary. If this was a real pandemic, there'd be wouldn't they wouldn't have to any offer any cash bonuses or anything like that there'd be people dropping down left right and center we'd all be feeling it everybody would have someone close a family or a friend that would have been suffering from this they wouldn't have to use constant fear-based propaganda in the media they wouldn't have to use faulty test kits and all this corruption lies and wrongdoing yep. it's all done by design to for this manufactured crisis yeah it's so shocking what's taken place and people can't leave their home they feel like prisoners and how do you feel about the lockdowns they were handing out expired food we had family members that couldn't even go in they were crying at the gates i mean sometimes it feels like they're baiting us for a reaction and they just keep pushing to see how far they'll get away with as a test totally and and honestly i really believe that's what it is they will push and push and it's funny you know the omnibus bill um there was a bit of pushback so that got amended or well, so a part of it got amended but people need to understand if we push back then we, we we've got this but if we don't and we don't speak up then it's game over it's really that simple yeah it most certainly is and you're setting a wonderful example for others to follow with your facebook streams people are sharing your music video around it's giving people some clarity and they can think from another perspective see it from a whole new point of view we need more people outspoken like that what type of feedback have you received since publishing that lovely song I have just been shown the most incredible and humbling kindness from strangers, honestly, just support. Um, and uh, I, I must have really needed it. Um, I think we always need uh, beautiful support and encouragement, but especially now, um, because it, it is lonely. It can be very lonely, you know? Um, and it just reminded me that human beings are actually really beautiful, you know, at the core. And um, it was just everything that I needed. So um, I just cannot say thank you enough, honestly. Yeah. That's beautiful. And when we see some wonderful traits coming out in people, it really sets a good example because 
It's also brought out some of the worst character types, people fighting over toilet rolls, people getting yeah. angry at others because they're not wearing a mask. And yeah. we see the hostility and rage and people are so frustrated because of the whole situation. Sometimes they feel inclined to just vent and lash out on others. So yeah. it's a flow on effect, isn't it? The rage. We need to raise our vibrations up and have compassion, sincerity, yeah. honesty, and love instead of, you know, trying to unleash all these bad emotions on others. Have you got any other songs that you're working on? I do. <clears throat> Look, I've been really lucky in that um, I've been able, I guess, to channel my anger and sadness into writing. So I do. I've got a lot of stuff um, which I will happily share with you. Um, I've got, yeah, I've got plenty of stuff. You know, it's really funny though. I just did a video for one and um, I wasn't wearing a mask. Why would I wear a mask? You know, um, I was out in the beautiful ocean and um, a friend said it will not get, he said the song's so beautiful. He said, but it's not going to get played anywhere because you're not wearing a mask. And he's so right because we have a chokehold. You know, people are not, there is no such thing as freedom of speech. Uh, not when you're question, questioning a narrative, you know. Um, but I am just so excited um, to get it out. And um, because I want people to know that there are artists um, that feel this way, that feel the same way. Um, yeah, and I hope it brings someone some happiness and joy. Yeah. It definitely has. It's brought me happiness too when I've been watching it. I applaud all initiatives that work towards helping people and providing a better future for all. And I hope to see you doing more talk shows, interviews, and voicing this powerful message because you're a wonderful role model that this community needs. Thank you very much for joining me, Vanessa, and I look forward to speaking with you again in the future. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate that. I really do. Thank you. I want to walk outside past nine. I want to play live music and feel alive, but your silence is deafening. Their presence is threatening. So say something. Say something. People call me brave for speaking out and speaking up It's not that I am brave, it's just that I don't give a fuck Why should I care about the things that I say? I won't stay silent, I won't be quiet And why should I care about the things that I say? I was never cool enough to get any real airplay anyway They wanna walk outside past nine they wanna play live music and feel alive But your silence is deafening And their presence is threatening So say something Say something And I'm not scared of losing fake friends online but I'm fucking terrified of sitting back and watching my real friends die They wanna walk outside past nine They wanna play live music and feel alive So smile for the cameras, cause everybody's watching And Melbourne, you're a big shot, and everybody's laughing Now everybody knows your name And everybody knows your name but your silence is deafening And their presence is threatening So say something Say something Say something Say something Your silence is deafening Missing you, Melbourne. 
Well, that does it for this episode of the We Are Change talk show. Be sure to like, share and subscribe and tune in next time where we expose corruption one show at a time.